Lael was born in 1985 out of Rally and Speed Matsumoto in the Yokohama Kanagawa Prefecture of Japan when they decided that all of the racing and rally development they did during the 70s and 80s should be brought to the masses. The original shop was renowned in Japan for being a place where Team TRCY, a team of over 300 people, would come together. From that point forward, the birth of Lael was legendary. The pure meaning of Lael is a French derivative defined as wing, with meaning of the desire to fly away without limits. Beat Rush, a street parts brand of Lael which uses the technology and engineering learned through years of motorsports, is true to what you come to expect of a top shelf Japanese performance company. The JDM racing heritage shows through in each Beat Rush part by means of attention to quality, detail, and overall performance. Alright, so today we are going to install Beat Rush engine mounts in the 2016 STI. Yeah, check these out. Oh, these are sick. Now these are super, super solid. Um, definitely going to have more of a race car feel. You're really going to feel all that vibration come through. So you guys ready to snap into some engine mounts? Oh yeah! And while I'm in there, ta-da! Beat Rush transmission mount. Ooh, look at this. That's nice! Oh yeah, look at all that. Beautiful, beautiful welds here. Nice, uh, stiff polymer bushing. This thing is gonna be super solid. So the reason we're doing this is because I have the Beat Rush pitch stop mount. Uh, the way that the drivetrain is mounted to the STI is it's basically a three-tier system. You've got a pitch stop, engine mounts, and transmission mount. Now, if you upgrade the pitch stop, but you don't upgrade the engine and the transmission mounts, well, the engine and transmission mounts are still going to flex, and then all of that flexing and torsion stress goes directly to the pitch stopper. Now, that's fine. The pitch stopper can handle it, but on these new cars, the mount of the pitch stopper to the firewall has been known to separate. So, uh, if you get all three of them, however, that won't happen because everything will be good and tight. Okay, so the first thing we got to do, we have to take off the Beat Rush uh, top strut brace and the Grim Speed top mount intercooler because we have to access the pitch stop behind it. Because we're going to be moving the motor up and down, we don't want that pitch stop to still be connected and put additional stress on the already weak mount on the firewall from Subaru. So this is the pitch stop back here. This is what I was talking about. You got to take off those bolts right there. That way it's loose. Now where it mounts to the firewall, this is what I was talking about. See this mount right here? Let me show you actually a comparison. All right, so look at this. That's, hear it? That's the 2016, 2015, 2017, 2018, so on and so forth. New age pitch stop mount. No. I just so happen to have a GC style sitting over here. Now let's take a look at this one for comparison. Hear how much thicker that is? Solid. Now obviously that's not a scientific test. However, um, it's good for showing you guys the difference. The tin can test, we can call it. All right, so now we got that part done. It's time to go up on the quick jacks so we can get underneath it and work on those engine mounts. Yeah. You'll notice over here, We've got the BNM Performance Fab Equal Length Header called Medusa. 
Yeah, that had to come off. I wasn't able to show it because this is starting to get a little more complicated. Uh, but basically the reason is that these mounts had nowhere to go. So it's easier to get to them too. Look at all that room that it clears up under here. See how much better that is? <laughs> There's the trusty block of wood. As you can see, we've got the beat rush engine mounts installed. One over there and one over there. I gotta say they are pretty pretty fancy in there. So what we're gonna do next is now we're gonna move on to the transmission mount. Since this is up in the air, I don't know if you can see it or not, but the transmission mount is available. Available for business. So we're gonna go in there and do our thing. Well, it's done. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry I wasn't able to record the whole procedure for you guys, but um, it's a real pain in the ass doing this stuff. It's a little more complicated than the rest of things. If, uh, if you're scared of getting under a car and uh, you know risking your fingers to a block of wood, I would suggest that you have these engine mounts installed by a professional. It's probably worth the money. That being said, you can do it yourself. Um, obviously I did it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go under the car and I'm just going to kind of explain how I did it and show you what I had to do. I figure that's better than nothing. Okay, so here's the uh, the B&M Performance Fab manifold. Beautiful as always. Uh, I took that off. Reason being was because it's hard to get to the engine mounts back there. See that little black piece with the silver bolt? That's the engine mount. Obviously that never would have came out if I would have left the manifold in. So for me that's step one. Uh, here you can see the, uh, the Beat Rush solid mount in place. Pretty nice, right? Okay, so when you go to lower the engine back down, this one went in, but then this one did not. So what you have to do is uh, you have to actually like lower the car back down on the ground and then shake the shit out of the motor. Um, keep shaking it and moving it around until it actually drops into place to where that, that stud will drop through the cross member. It's pretty scary. <laughs> And it sounds like hell, but that's how you got to do it. Another one of the difficult things was reaching this uh, this second mount bolt that's way back here. Uh, it's in the center of the screen. Basically, you have to um, use a, a shallow drive socket. You can't use the wrench anymore because the wrench won't fit around the ridges on this, uh, this metal guy back here. Okay, so onto the transmission mount. Now, the, yeah, the transmission mount was actually substantially easier. Um, you can see it, it's in there. Uh, basically, I took out this and this, and disconnected those, disconnected that and that. I loosened this over here, and the same one on that side, that way this would drop down a little bit, and then it gave me room to remove this whole component. There's, there's two more bolts back here, you just pop that out, and then this drops down, and then um, you just install it, and then put it all back together. It's it's really not that bad. But I did have the uh, <laughs> important thing. I should have said this in the beginning. I had the jack with a piece of wood, wood like right there, holding it up. You don't necessarily have to jack the transmission up, but you do have to give it some support. So, uh, yeah. But I just got a text message from Saku from Kami Speed. He's on his way over here. He's got something really cool he wants to show us, and uh, he should be here any minute. Ah, oh, there he is. You guys remember this car? We filmed it a while back. Oh yeah. It's got boost. Hey Michael. Hey, what's up brother? Hey, what's up man? So you got some cool stuff to show us today. Yeah. I got some cool stuff. Let me bring it in and we can check it out. Oh yeah. All right guys, so what we're gonna do today, we have the battle of the Asian Snap-on versus DeWalt impacts. Mine is made in Korea. This one's made in Taiwan. In Taiwan. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them together and we're gonna see who wins. Are you ready? I'm ready. Alright. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I see smoke. Ah, oh, shit. I think we broke it. All right, so uh, upon closer examination, we may have actually discovered a winner. Um, we looked in here, and it turns out this thing was actually getting hot because it was starting to wear around the edges, and because it was plugged in that way, the snap-on is the winner. Go so Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, so you're probably wondering why the hell did you guys just do that? What did you just see? Uh, the whole point of this is for a, ta-da, a plug. Basically, we're, uh, we're holding off uh, a sale and raffle for raised products this month, upcoming month. Um, and you have a chance of winning these wonderful project, uh, right. products. Snap-on, um, 18 volt impact wrench with some, it says raise on it, so cool. Yeah. And uh, the raised G-Shock. Yeah, check this out. This thing is cool. It's got all sorts of cool like Rays stuff on it. Japan Power. Rays. Oh yeah, good stuff. So uh, we're not just going to do that though. Um, I was going to have Saku drive the STI and see what he thinks about it. Yeah. What do you think? Want to do that? Yeah, let's go for a ride. All right, let's go. All right. All right, so have you ever driven an STI? I have. I've driven an 04 and actually have driven a uh, 16 STI, but stock. Oh, really? So this will be a good comparison. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you get to see all yeah. the changes and everything. All the, all the goodies. Testing. System ready. Uh, feel those mounts? I do. <laughs> you can already feel it on the steering wheel. I mean, not too much, but you definitely feel the vibrations in the car. Yeah. It's nice, isn't it's it? It's nice. <laughs> what do you think? You can already tell. I'm just going in a straight line, but I can already tell. It's nice, right? It's very nice. <laughs> the exhaust sounds great, and you just feel... Yeah, you just feel planted. Styled in it. Yeah. Styled in really nice. We did a good job, guys. We did a good job. Very good job. So now that you've driven it, what's your uh, your consensus on the uh, uh, Boostaholics SDI? Basically, took a great car and mm -hmm. just improved on it in uh, every single way. I, I honestly, I I can't see any drawbacks. Someone might complain the exhaust is too loud, but yeah. just being a big baby. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds awesome. Uh, it drives great. It handles great. Um, power is instant. Yeah. Uh, you can daily it. It's comfortable. Uh, AC works. Yeah. Everything works. I mean, <laughs> that's a positive. Yeah, right? I mean, there's no, <laughs> there's no drawbacks, honestly. Oh, so that's awesome. I, I would say you did a very, very good job. Oh, that's guess. awesome. Thanks, yeah. brother. Well, I couldn't have done it without you guys. You know, you guys and Revworks and M Tune. Of course. You know, you guys really helped me pick out a lot of really good parts, and uh, I think it all kind of came together that way. And I'm really happy with the car. So. That's the STI. The only thing left is I have some uh, a big brake kit to put on. Um, and other than that, I'm pretty much done with this car. I, I don't think there's really anything else that I could do to it performance or aesthetically wise. I mean, maybe I could put some carbon fiber stuff on it. I don't know. What do you guys think? You think we should be done with the STI and uh, focus on the GC or do you think we should do some more stuff on it? I don't know. Let me know. Comment below. Hope you had fun watching this. And as always, 
Run more boosts than tire pressure. Yes. 